Welcome to your practice today. My name's Alice, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you some tips and tools to be able to move into a pose called Urdhva Dhanurasana, or Upward Facing Bow. It's also commonly called Wheel Pose. So it's a pretty big backbend, and it can be a challenging one because we are moving our spine into extension, an opening of the front side of the body. It's a motion that we don't experience very much in our everyday life. We're usually more like this. And also your hands are a part of your foundation alongside of your feet. And so it puts us into an asana where we're both upside down as well as backwards. And so our perspective can get a little bit flipped. So hopefully with this tutorial, you'll be able to find more stability as well as freedom in your wheel pose. We'll start off by looking at the pelvis. So come onto your knees and tuck your toes. Make sure that your heels are facing up towards the ceiling and that your heels are the same distance apart as your knees, which are hip distance apart. Now, without thinking about it too much, just let your bum go back and then let your bum sway forward so that you're just exploring this movement of the hip, how it can move along the back plane of the body as well as through the front plane of the body. Now, often when we're doing backbends, a lot of people who complain about backbend end up doing this. So they tuck their tailbone in, they squeeze the glutes in, and then that really starts to jam up through the backside of the sacrum. So if you notice that you've got some back pain or just some limitation here, a good action to learn how to work in your body is working your thigh bones back. Now, what this does is it sets the head of the femur bone into the acetabulum, into the home of the hip. And that's really where the femur bone likes to sit. It feels really safe and stable there. And then your back spinal muscles don't have to contract and constrict in order to hold yourself in place. And so with your heels steady, take your thigh bones back and apart. With this action, you'll also feel a broadening of the sit bones, a widening across the belt line of your sacrum, as well as a widening across your upper waist. Okay, so that's one motion. Now, it would be kind of silly to do our back bends like this because then, again, a little bit of limitation. And so this is the freedom part of the back bend, but now we need to root into stability. So once you have your thigh bones back, look down at your belly button and place one hand into the belly button, go through the body, and landmark roughly where it is behind you. Now, from the place behind your belly button, we're going to lengthen your tailbone straight down towards the floor as if it was dropping an anchor between your knees. And that creates stability, length in the low spine. Now, if you overdo this action, what will happen is that you'll tuck your tailbone, right? And then when you tuck your tailbone, you'll probably be able to feel there's a broadening across the front side of your pelvis, but a narrowing on the back side. And so your glutes start to clench in towards the midline. You're overworking the glutes. And then you start to jam up through the sacrum. And then there's a, maybe a lot of stability, but not much freedom. So we're looking for that sweet spot that's between the two. We always start by broadening to the backside first to create space. From your knees, take the tops of your thigh bones back and apart, space. From behind your belly button, anchor down towards the tailbone, and you'll feel a drawing up of your pubic bone up towards the navel and the tone of your navel up towards the heart. And so we're looking for that sweet spot right in the middle in our Urdhva Dhanurasana. All right, second motion, the shoulders. So have a sit onto your shins now, and we'll work a few different things with the shoulders. I've said, as I mentioned, the head of the femur likes to sit into the ball and socket joint of the hip. And the head of the humerus, the upper arm bone, really lets, likes to sit into the shoulder socket as well. Now, one of the things that's different is that it's not quite so much like the ball and so socket joint of your pelvis. It's more like a shallow dish. And so it's really important for your arm bone to set into the shoulder joint. Otherwise, when you're in your back bend, you're going to work, overwork, and overpull through the ligaments and the tendons, and you're not really using bone strength and stability and truly working your muscles to get up into here. 
when you integrate your arms, you'll feel that you won't need quite as much arm strength as you thought you did because your bones are stacked. So we'll start with an exercise where you reach your arms straight forward. Now, we're going to do a little bit of plugging and unplugging so that you understand the motion. Now, keep your backside where it is. Draw your ribs in. And now, imagine like you're reaching for something that's out of your grasp, but you can't lean forward. And see how the head of my humerus moves away from the socket. Now, it's kind of like a rowing action, but without the bend in your elbow. So you can squeeze your hands into gentle fists and row your arms back into the shoulder socket. We'll do that a few times. So as you next inhale, reach. This is out of socket. As you exhale, plug them in. One more time. Inhale, reach. Exhale, plug it in. All right. Let's try that position with a different uh, arm movement. This time, reach your arms up and overhead. Clasp your hands and place your hands behind your skull. Now squeeze your elbows in towards the temples. And this is what shoulders on and off the back look like from here. So if the shoulders are off the back, the elbows will lift up. And you'll feel like the skin on the front side of your armpits kind of like pulse. Now as you exhale to plug in, use the muscles right at the base of your armpits to draw the arm bones back into the shoulder, shoulder socket. And I'll do that a few times. So as you inhale, unplug. Exhale, plug in. Unplug. Plug it in. Now keep it plugged in so that you can muscle memory what it feels like to have your shoulders on your back. With the arm bones set, start to soften the back side of your heart so that there is that sense of ease. We don't want to overwork the front side of the body. Good. And then release your hands. So to come into Urdhva Dhanurasana, we'll remember those two different actions, the lengthening of the tailbone, the, th the widening of the thighs, and then the lengthening of the tail, drawing of the arm bones in. Coming onto your back now, bend your knees and place the soles of your feet down onto the floor. Walk your heels in so that they're pretty close to your sitting bones so that when you stretch your arms, the longest fingertips can touch your heels. Now, set your feet so that they're hip bone distance apart, and you want to keep your knees that same distance the whole time. We're going to do that little bit of that thigh bones back action. So take your hands onto the thigh, and then take the tops of the thigh bones back, and it'll feel like you're creating a little arc in the lower lumbar spine. You want to maintain some element of that arc because your spine is designed this way to keep you steady. You don't want to squish your arcs. Now from that landmark behind the belly button, lengthen down towards the tailbone so that kind of half that arc disappears. Keep your pelvis like that and then reach your arms up towards the sky. Plug your arm bones into your shoulder sockets. And then flip your palms so that you face the ceiling, bend your elbows, and place your hands onto the floor as best you can. You'll have a chance to reset your hands again, and so don't worry too, too much about if they're in perfect alignment, but place as much of the palms of your hands down as you can. And now squeeze your elbows towards each other and plug your shoulders onto your back. If you need to do that again, inhale, unplug, and then exhale, plug them in. Now keep your arm bones plugged in, maintain the arc of your lower spine, and as you inhale, press your feet in towards the floor to lift your pelvis up. Press your hands into the floor, and then come up onto the crown of your head. Pause and stay here. Walk your hands out a little bit wider, and place your index fingers so that they're in line with the long edges of your mat. Plug your shoulder blades onto your back again. And then as you next inhale, curl to the forehead, as you lift the tip of your heart up. Just watch that you're not over clenching through the glutes. You want the glutes to be toned, but not clenched. And then on your next inhale, press up. Push through your hands, push through your feet. And draw your shoulder blades up onto your back and then curl. Take a few breaths here. Save some energy for coming out as you bend your elbows. Go crown of the head back down. 
and then release your body back down onto the floor. And walk your feet out to the wide edges of your mat. Let your knees tip in towards the center. And pause here. And so if you want to try Urdhva Dhanurasana again, you can go ahead. And hopefully that, uh, that gives you a few tips and tools to be able to try this back bend with both stability and freedom. And thanks for watching today. Namaste.